Welcome to the Resilient Retail Game Plan, a podcast for anyone wanting to start, grow or scale a profitable creative product business with me, Catherine Erdley. The Resilient Retail Game Plan is a podcast dedicated to one thing, breaking down the concepts and tools that I've gathered from 20 years in the retail industry and showing you how you can use them in your business. This is the real nuts and bolts of running a successful product business, broken down in an easy, accessible way. This is not a podcast about learning how to make your business look good. It's the tools and techniques that will make you and your business feel good, confidently plan, launch and manage your products, and feel in control of your sales numbers and cash flow to help you build a resilient retail business. Welcome, it's episode 41 of the Resilient Retail Game Plan, and I'm your host, Catherine Erdley, as well as the founder of the Resilient Retail Club. The Resilient Retail Club is my membership group for creative product businesses, and you can find out more at resilientretailclub.com. Today, we have a very special guest. Sylvina DeVita is the founder of My Paper Cut Forest, as well as a member of the Resilient Retail Club, and she is an expert when it comes to selling on Etsy. This series of podcasts is all about talking to small business owners and experts about a variety of tactics, variety of things that you can try to really move your business forward. When I knew I wanted to talk about Etsy, I immediately thought about Sylvina because she is passionate, as you're going to hear on the podcast. She is really passionate about the role that Etsy can play for small product businesses. And she's got a really interesting perspective that you don't often hear about how business owners can think about their Etsy shops. So without further ado, let's jump right in and hear what Sylvina has to say about her journey with Etsy. Sylvina, thank you so much for being on the podcast. How are you doing today? Hi, Catherine. Thank you so much for inviting me. I'm very well, thank you. And as soon as I knew that I wanted to do an episode about Etsy, I knew that I had to get you and your amazing business on the podcast because I know you're such a big Etsy fan. We're going to hear much more about that later on, but do you want to start us off by just introducing yourself and telling us a little bit about your business? So my name is Silvina De Vita, and I am a designer and a paper artist. I run my paper cap forest. That is a small online shop. And yeah, I've been having an Etsy shop since 2012. And when you say small, you literally do mean miniature, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Actually, yes. <laughs> I, I specialize on paper miniatures and yeah, I, I just really like tiny things. <laughs> I actually can't believe it. Sometimes I watch your videos about you cutting and creating these things because you make people's bookcases, you make <laughs> designs, you make plants, you make all kinds of things out of paper, which is it's incredible to watch. And I always just think to myself, how do you <laughs> deal with such tiny little things? <laughs> Well, <laughs> I mean, patience. <laughs> I think it's, it was truly all because just to do something different, you know, mm. and, 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 and it's all kind of related to the Etsy shop. When I started, I was just doing 2D paper cuts. Mm -hmm. And after a while, I mean, when I started eight, nine years ago, there was not many people doing it, but then it grew really quickly. And there were many more people, many more shops. And I really wanted just to do something different that catch the eye. So I start making like 3D things and miniatures. I mean, who doesn't like miniatures? Come on. You know? I mean, <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever had a gust of wind come in and just, you know, you're working all morning on some tiny little piece of paper and then some oh, um, a breeze? I, I, <laughs> I tell you, you know, I... Silly me, I left things in my desk and then it was a massive rain and <gasps> I didn't know my, my roof was leaking. <gasps> I noticed the next day. So yes, <laughs> things like that do happen. <laughs> and then you have to start it all over again. <laughs> oh my goodness. I can just, <laughs> I can only imagine. So, <laughs> so tell us then, so Etsy, was that the very first place you yes, started selling? actually 2012, I was 
making first things for friends and as you know someone said oh why well, you know why don't you just sell these kind of boxes I was just doing boxes with like paper cuts inside and I was selling mm -hmm. on the studio that I was at the moment that they were having like kind of events and some locals markets but I thought oh okay I will open the Etsy shop and and I did and of course I mean it I learned so much since there's so many things I will do differently if I knew all the things that I know now. But yeah, I'm I'm really glad I did I made that decision. And so now, still now, Etsy is your main sort of the main revenue driver for the business. Yes. Funny thing is that not many people realize like the importance of such a worldwide search engine that is Etsy. I, I think Etsy is a shop window mm. to the world. And even though that, yes, they take commission, yes, you have just to pay per listing, you have no idea who is watching, really, and what kind of orders and clients and commissions you will receive uh, through a worldwide platform that is actually like almost in every country, you know? So even though it's a commercial platform, but it's actually the amount of people who use it as an engine and use it as just to discover trends and or product spotters, it's very powerful. Yeah, that's fascinating. I hadn't really thought about it like that, but you're right. It is, uh, when I think about how I use Etsy, it is, it's just, you know, there's so much, there's so many people on Etsy. There's such a wide choice that it is like a search engine. It's in the same way that it's almost like if you think about Amazon, for example, people off almost see Amazon as a search engine because you can find anything. But Etsy's kind of like the, the small independent handmade version, uh, you know, it's it, where you could, you, if you want something special and handmade or unique, different, that you can go to Etsy and, and you can find pretty much everything. I think the same happens with a lot of PR. I mean, there's a lot of uh, things, blogs, that, that they use Etsy as a di dictator of trends or product spotter. So if Etsy features you or if Etsy puts you in a spot on the social media or on the home page, you will see an, an amazing mm -hmm. and expected PR coming your way. Because if you really want just to find something from a small independent shop handmade, sometimes it's like the first thing you will think so. It's just to find me on Etsy, you know. And it's because as well it's been in the market, I have to double check, but 15 or 18 years in the market. So it's been in a long, you know, right. a long time. So, yeah, I definitely think it's a, it's a massive search engine, really. And it's not only been going for, I didn't realise it's quite that long, so 15 to 18 years, but it's actually been having a phenomenally good time. If you look at the stats and the, the earnings reportings and the sales reports of Etsy when they file, they're just, it's just been unbelievable. So you've been on the, the platform for about eight yeah. years then, yes. or nine years this year. Have you seen it change over time? Oh, absolutely. I mean, I mean, I've, I've seen the most growth in the past four in terms of not only mm -hmm. that, how many billions of users and, and shops that there are, but as well that I just really understand that you could, you know, you can leave on the sales on Etsy if you do the right things. I think yes. there's a um, misconception that Etsy will be always like the sideline, you know, like whatever you do, you have Etsy as it. And actually, I feel that people kind of like miss the opportunity that actually you can can make a lot of money on that platform if you just put the time on the right mm. things. You know what I mean? And of course, yes, you know, it's like language in itself. You you learn as you more get into the platform and to the listings, but definitely it can just be. I mean, your main income, really. Yeah, that's that's a really good point. For me, when I think about Etsy and I think about especially the last few years, I think that maybe there was a perception maybe eight, nine, ten years ago where, that it was about very small, very handmade, and it was more about the craft, whereas now it's a focus on design. And when I see the the sort of information that Etsy's putting out and the way that they're presenting themselves to the world – they have like the Etsy Design Awards, for example, and you see those products that are on there and they are 
stunning. You know, this really incredible product on Etsy. So it's sort of shrugging off its reputation as, or, or its its perception as being sort of all about crafters, which how to say it without, I mean, craft is really important part of it, but I suppose it's more about design now than than before. Does that does that sort of fit with what you're seeing? Yeah, I guess what I like about Etsy is that really there's a space for everyone. I absolutely take the point uh, that you're saying that you definitely, if you you know if you have a hobby and you really like that hobby, you can open an Etsy shop and and I'm sure you'll do well. But as well, there's a space for mm-hmm. actually designers who, if Etsy give you an award, you know what I mean. Not only their award is money, but as mm. well is the um, prestige that comes that Etsy in again a worldwide platform put, you know, as a Etsy designer award. They studied this two years ago. And I think that is it's a great way just to, you know, shine a light of yeah, a lot of, you know, amazing product designer or graphic designers or textile designers that are just, you know, incredibly, incredibly talented. Again, I think a lot of magazines, a lot of blogs, a lot of really huge media companies watch that are watching you know Mm -hmm. so basically I really think that is not you know it's it's a misconception thinking that well no it's just only for hobbyists or it's only just to do you know your sideline when actually that can be you know really a a, a truly a truly window to the world I, I do believe that yeah, I love that. It's so important when we're thinking about visibility to remember that there are these platforms because that is so hard when you first start out to how you actually become visible. I'd love to dig in a little bit more about Etsy and the support that you get because that's another reason that you're such a passionate advocate for the platform and your passion really comes through. So do you want to tell us a little bit about the Etsy teams and what that means and your involvement? I'm the captain of the Brighton Etsy team and what that means. <laughs> it means that uh, <laughs> Etsy has like regional teams. They help local sellers and makers to su- succeed in the platform. We are all volunteers. So, I mean, Etsy doesn't pay us. So we do it on our like free time. And you have a captain mm-hmm. and team leaders. My team has five leaders, including me. And we help. First, we put up events and sometimes coffee mornings. We put up talks with for people that want us to, I don't know, learn more about photography or learn more about SEO. And then we put markets. And basically, we, we have a close communication with ETHQ to know, for example, changes in practices, in the platform programs, opportunities that arises mm-hmm. for sellers, that basically Etsy communicates to us, to the teams, and the teams communicate it to, uh, you know, the members. We're very lucky that Brighton is an incredible creative city. We have around 2,000 members, I think more now. So we're one of the biggest of the country and it's just because yeah we just live in a very creative spot but basically the great thing is that if whatever you live in the country I'm sure you have an Etsy team it's a source that you can reach out if you just are new to Etsy you can just go to your team to the local team and say hey, could you please help me just to help you know I just opened a shop what do I do next and basically Local teams can just help makers and sellers to just to get the best from the platform. And in general, all that information is is free. I mean, we we don't charge for the meetings. We just charge when we do an event, for example, a Christmas market. We have to pay a venue. And of course, we need just to charge for the table. But in general, when we do talks online or, you know, it's, it's like free sources, for for everyone because I do believe that everyone has a space to succeed in the platform and I think that's what I find very interesting about Etsy I wasn't even myself aware of the teams until I think probably until I met you and you were talking about them (laughs) but uh, that's not true actually I think I'd been to a local (laughs) Etsy market but again I don't think I really knew 
the full extent to which the teams were there to support the sellers. And I think that's such a such a wonderful idea. So if you listen to the podcast and you're on Etsy and you're feeling a bit stuck, then look for your local team because that's what they're there for. They get the information. So you said then if there's a change to the platform, if there's a change in the way that they're doing things or a new feature or, or a new opportunity, that that's also something that, that would get passed on via the teams as well. Absolutely. For example, if there are a PR program opportunity that Etsy is looking for a specific type of seller, we know. So we tell the, you know, we tell the sellers. If there's changes in the SEO, for example, how you write the titles or the tags, we know. So basically, it's very good if you, you know, if you can reach to the to the team, to the local teams. Not only for support. I mean, we have really wonderful community here, which I found a lot of friends, uh, you know, so it's not only people who just maybe are like me, you know, makers working on your own all day. And then you have these monthly meetings that you just go and spend a morning talking to other people about clients and orders or what's going on on, you know, or how you can get better at, you know, having more visibility. I really think it's a, it's a great resource. It sounds like you're, you can't wait to get back to those face-to-face meetings. It's been so long, absolutely. It's been a year that we haven't done anything. Miss the Christmas market and the meetings is just, yeah, definitely Zoom is not the same, isn't it? No, no, I agree with that. So then let's let's talk a little bit about somebody's listening to the podcast. They think they want to get started on Etsy or they or maybe they're on Etsy, but they want to grow it. What would be your top tips? I think like as everything in life, you if you put time, you will you will have it back. It will bring back revenue as everything. What I do, I open my shop every day. I mean, I check the banner, check the landed page, how it looks, the products on the first page, check the listings that are expired. If, for example, I put seasonal banners so depending if you know christmas is coming the banner will reflect that yeah i think it's just important just to be on top of your shop all the time as well another tip will be just to populate your shop put more listings use the time to design new products because etsy loves new new things right they put anything new for a short period of time and it will appear first on the searches so it's good that you just take time just to put more listings, even though that they charge per listing, but actually it's good when, when you have more to offer, basically. Right. I always check the listings that are not selling. Uh, so why they're not selling? I check the tags and the titles and I always put them as manual and not as automatic. So basically you can just choose things to renew themselves. Mm -hmm. as automatic but I always put them as manual on purpose so if they didn't sell off they didn't perform very well I can just recheck them after the four month period that Etsy gives you you know for 20p basically wow (laughs) (laughs) and then I will say as well that just don't copy other people's design you risk to get your shop closed forever. I mean, a small business are very small communities and people do find out if you, if you do that. Right. And original work really gets super rewarded on Etsy. You know, uh, not only as we were talking about, like if you just get a spotlight, but as well that basically I really think people are finding or want to find something different. So just do something different. You know, last year I did three times the revenue that 2019. Wow. And you're like, how? Uh, You know, it it was pandemic, you know, and actually, you know, triple the amount of what I took in 2019. And and I really think that is because they truly go and find something different. So just don't copy. (laughs) (laughs) And then I will just say as well, use your stats. So see which listings are driving traffic and why. The photos, I think, are key to successful Etsy shops. If you're going to invest in something, invest in photos. I did that last year and I actually realized that you make an immense difference in my shop. Right. So, And do you think that that's part of the tripling of your revenue was coming from? Absolutely, because it was a knock-on effect. So what happened was because of the new photos, Etsy promote for free. 
they, they don't charge you extra for putting you on the homepage. Ah. And I found myself on the homepage. And after that, not only brought a lot of customers to my shop, me in November, I realized that I, I had no idea that I was featured in a lot of design blogs in America. And I had no idea where I was, ha- you know, how did I got there? And it was because of that Etsy homepage. They spot you there. And then since then, they go and check other stuff. And it was incredible. Like November for me was just one of the biggest months ever in my life. Wow. And it was just this unexpected PR. Another thing that I don't, I think people are a little bit put off of this off-site advertising program because you cannot opt out of it. Basically, you you have you, you have to go with it. They have two different parts of, of, of advertising program. You can advertise on Etsy that basically is inside the platform, and that's you you can you know choose to do it or not yeah. for a but then you have an off-site advertising program that is that Etsy will do it for you. You want it or not. And they will advertise in Google, in Facebook, Instagram, you know. And if that brought custom to you, they bring you revenue, it will charge, if you did in the shop in the year, more than $10,000, it's a twelve percent advertising fee but if you do less if you did less than ten thousand dollars per year it's a 15 percent fee on that basically of that advertise um listing that they brought you right got you yes yeah. you got me so basically you could either advertise on Etsy, which is like a promoted listings that you can choose to do yes or no, but then they themselves will do these ads. You should probably, most of us, I'm sure will probably have seen them where they'll feature a variety of different products. You have no control where you can't opt out of that. Your products may be featured in offsite ads. And if somebody purchases through that, then you have to pay somewhere between 12 or 15% based on your turnover. Is that Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> and there was a lot of, you know, people moaning and complaining that they couldn't get out of it. And why, you know, why do they have to pay? But I, I mean, to be honest, I really think it's a small fee comparison to the things that they will bring you. And again, they put you in front of customers that you are, you, you don't know who, who is watching. Mm. So last year it brought me, for example, a thousand five hundred pounds on sales, on off-site advertising, uh, you know, and that is actually, I didn't do anything of it. I just did nothing. It just brought it for me without me doing anything. And, and I pay 12% advertising fee on that because I was actually doing more in a year that, you know, the $10,000 uh, that you need just to, just to qualify. But basically I really think that the SEO that Etsy is bringing, like the, is is so big, is absolutely massive, that you, you you're not realizing like how amazing really it is. Yes, of course. I mean, it's not you know, it's a commercial platform. You know, people are just they want us to do well and they want us to do money. But I had so many commissions of like people who will never you know will never find me if it was not from Etsy. Right. I had. So many huge, huge commissions and events and opportunities and things that people who just went there and find me. And then I got, you know, a great client not long ago. I someone, you know, an amazing top A client find me on Etsy. And I couldn't just believe that they just send you an email there and then you have a client for life, you know. So I really, really believe that. For more than you have your website, or you know, if you have in, if you are in other platforms, just do put the time on Etsy. Put your time on Etsy, and if you are going to invest, just invest on in the photos. Not only because they will be amazing for your website, but as well, Etsy loves great photos. And if you get feature, that will bring so many extras that I don't think people realize of that. So that 12%, is that on top of the commission that you pay to Etsy anyway? Or is is that just a higher level of commission? Yeah. So basically they charge you 
yeah, they charge you like 20p per listing mm-hmm. and then 20p, like another listing when you when you sell. And I think 3% commission, 3.5% commission when you when you sell. Mm-hmm. It used to be 3.5 and now it's 7. That's that's what happened. It just changed in the past two years yeah. or three years. But then this advertising fee is just on the listing that they brought you. So basically, for example, they brought me last year £1,470 and I pay £135 in advertising fees. Right. So actually that's less than 10%. Yeah. And I took those from my stats. This year so far, and it's been what, March, they brought me already £940. So they have a great SEO in, in a lot of different platforms. So it's definitely worth worth doing. I know from conversations we had before that that's one of your frustrations, as you said, about people's perception is, oh, well, they've started doing these offsite ads and actually the rates that they're charging are so much higher. But I suppose from my perspective, when I think about what are your options as a product business, obviously your own website is the most profitable because you, you're not paying commission. But yes. really, if you look at, say, an Etsy sale, an Etsy sale with no offsite ads is actually one of the lowest commissions of any marketplace that there is out there. And then secondly, even if you add in those offsite ads, then ultimately you're not really, you're only then nudging it up almost to what most platforms will charge you anyway. So I agree with you. I think that I don't really see that as a, as a negative. If anything, as you said, it's getting you out. And as you yourself have seen, and I think that's what's so interesting about your story is that it's not just about the money that you've had from Etsy. It's about the exposure. It's about the community, the support, the exposure the great clients, there's so many things that it's brought you. Yeah, absolutely. I think exactly as you say, Catherine, if you compare with what is out, this is actually your cheapest option. Mm -hmm. But not only the the cheapest option really, you know, not only, you know, the fee that they take in every sale and as well how much they're they're charging you for an advertising, but it's it's not. I think it's just to realise how other things that they're bringing you that you're not noticing until until later. For example, to me, the great discovery last year was that unexpected PR. Yeah. I never did PR. I never paid PR in my life for my business. And when I did a um, kind of reverse search <laughs> and I realized I was featured in more than 25 blogs, particularly in some that I always follow. And it was like my dream to be there. And I found myself, I was like, oh my goodness. And it was because I was in the homepage on Etsy. Those kind of things are like the extras. <laughs> you yes. know, it's just extras that I really, there's kind of a wrong perception of what Etsy means. And it's because there's a space for everyone. And yes, there's a lot of people who are maybe resellers or, or people who are, just to say, it's a side business. As well, there's a lot of, you know, designers. There's a lot of people who trying just to put the art in front of the world. And, and I really think it's a great platform for that. Brilliant. And can I just ask one last question? So you, you mentioned about the, the unexpected PR. So even though we've been talking specifically about Etsy and your sales on Etsy, have you found that actually being on Etsy has helped drive sales to your own website as well? My website, and this was just on purpose, I decided two years ago to go with pattern. It's actually as an Etsy service. And and I did on purpose. That was actually a conscious decision because uh, when I ask around to make my own website with with the Shopify and then pay the designer or you know just do it myself. So the time basically of, of that pattern Basically, the commission is very low on the sale. You don't have just to pay uh, like the same in terms of the listings. So you don't pay like the same amount that you pay for Etsy. But what I'm having is the SEO, is the Mm. the search engine optimization. So basically, I jump up in that kind of wagon, if you know what, you know, if if you know what I mean, that's that was my decision to say, okay, yes. Still, I'm paying 
around 12 pounds a month. So it's a subscription kind of thing. You pay 12 pounds per month. They don't charge commission on the on the sales. Uh, but of course I pay if I sell or not. So I pay yeah. the subscription monthly. Yeah. But yeah. it's the SEO. It's the SEO. It's again, it's the tool that they have that I thought to use. And so far, I, I still have a lot of sales through my own website. So basically that that investment, that 12 pounds investment, I think now used to be 12 and maybe now it's 15, it's less than 15 pounds. But basically I I get the money, you know, the like basically you you again you are investing, you know, uh, yes. because not only is the search that you are into, but as well the design of the of the site was fine. I only had to do one click and I had a website. Wow. So when I made that decision, I thought, well, I can spend money up front just to make that. And then as well, of course, you have to pay Shopify and or PayPal or whatever. So you you do have just to pay in anything you choose, you have just to pay a fee. So for me it was the cheapest option in that time. For my business was the best decision two years ago. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much, Sylvini. You've shared so many incredible gems today. And do you want to just finish off by telling us a little bit about where we can find you? My shop is called My Paper Gap Forest. And you can find me as mypapergapforest.co.uk or mypapergapforest.etsy.com. Wonderful. Thank you. And you're also over on Instagram if you want to come say hi. And we will put the links to those in the show notes. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you so much, Catherine, for your time. Thank you so much for tuning in today. I hope you enjoyed that episode. As I told you, Sylvina is so passionate about Etsy. It's really inspiring to hear just the difference that it's made in her business. If you are interested in figuring out which sales platform you want to sell on, I do have a guide to selling platforms, which is available as part of my bundle of resources and the Start Your Business free toolkit. If you go to resilientretailclub.com slash toolkits, you can see all three of them. I have a Start Your Business, Grow Your Business and Scale Your Business free toolkits. So do go ahead and check those out. In the meantime, though, why not head over to Instagram at Resilient Retail Club, tag us in, show us where you were listening to the podcast today and drop me a DM. Tell me what you thought about the episode. Tell me how Etsy is for you and your business and if there's anything in specific that you're thinking about doing after listening to today's episode. As always, if you have a moment to rate and review the podcast, it makes such a huge difference and I'm so appreciative to each and every one of you who've already done so. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button on iTunes and you can be the first to know when new episodes are released. If you've enjoyed this week's episode, then I invite you to check out resilientretailclub.com. The Resilient Retail Club is the membership for anyone wanting to start, grow or scale a profitable product business. No more trawling Google trying to find the answers to your questions or wading through general business advice that speaks mainly to service-based businesses. Whether you're still at the idea stage or you've been going for a while but want to get more focused and organised when it comes to your business, the Resilient Retail Club is the place for you. With a library of courses tailored to creative product businesses, several live sessions a month and a supportive and active community, the Resilient Retail Club is the perfect membership to help you hit your goals faster. Check it out at resilientretailclub.com.